Welcome to Morning Manor's Week in Review with Pastor Steve Mary. A summary of this week's Morning Manor. What you don't have. This is a very well-known story. 5,000 men had come to hear Jesus speak. Well, we all know the end of that story. Jesus told everyone to sit down in rows. Then he blessed the food and break the bread. And everyone was invited to take as much as they wanted. But have you ever wondered if anybody else there that day had any food? We know that the little boy had five loaves and two fishes. But surely someone else must have had something as well. What about the disciples? Did any of them have any food with them? If they did, why didn't they offer when the need arose? Well, it's easy to conclude. It is because they weren't looking at what they had. They were focused on what they did. Did not have. You're not less valuable in his sight because there are some things that you're not good at. On the contrary, you're needed exactly the way you are to complete the body of Christ that the church is supposed to be. There's most definitely a lot of things that we're not able to do, but there are lots of things that we can. Because you have the God-given ability and the character to do them, just like the prophet said to the widow, what have you got? Use that. The thought of the day, I might not have the same abilities and gifts as somebody else, but I've been given enough to help build a kingdom. What you're seeking here determines the hereafter. We are in a world that tells the one you must have it before you die. The rich young man in the book of Matthew went away sorrowful because he could not let go of his earthly treasure for the heavenly. In verse 16, he came and asked, what must he do to have eternal life? Everybody wants to live forever. Ask most people and they will tell you. They want to look young and beautiful. They don't want to grow old and die. But let us look at the Lord's response to the young man. The Lord told him to keep his commandments. The young ruler answered back in all truth. However, the next question would prove to be very difficult. The Lord told him to sell his possession, give it to the poor, by the which he would be laying up treasures for himself in heaven. Then, come and follow him. But the scripture said he went away sorrowful. I'm not saying that everybody needs to just go around and quitting their job and lay around waiting for God to drop a house or a car in your lap. What I'm saying is, invest in the kingdom of God and his church with your time and your finances. Then you'll be laying up treasures in heaven. God is coming again. Let us be caught doing His will. Child of God, keep trying. Never quit. The only failure in life is quitting. Revelation 22 verse 12 says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. What you seek while on this earth will help to determine where you spend your eternity. The thought of the day Worrying is nothing more than faith on vacation. No time to look back. Today there are too many people living on the edge, living too close to deception, too close to just jumping right back in the past and with all of its failures. Ask yourself about how bad it was and how bad you had it before God dragged you out of the pit. Ask yourself how bad would I be if I turned back and took up the more spirits even worse than the ones that I had. Ask yourself, how would it affect my family, friends and all those around me? In Matthew 12, 44, it tells us that the spirit that left the man said, I will return from whence I came. So when the spirit returns to the man's heart and find it empty, then that demon finds several other spirits worse than himself and then lives in that man again. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Eve was willing to give an ear to the serpent. And this is very dangerous because the enemy has a way of mixing lies with truth and then making it sound reasonable. The enemy was able to deceive Eve, not just by what he said, but because Eve was willing to give an audience to the devil. But if you notice Jesus, when the enemy came to tempt him, Jesus spared no time, but using the word to speak against the enemy. Child of God, this is no time for us to give up. Do as Esther said, if I perish, I perish, but I must see the king. The thought of the day, whatever comes, Jesus, I'll go through with you. The inconvenience of being a Christian. 
Have you ever thought of all the things that you could do if you weren't a Christian? Do you ever go back in time when you didn't have to get up on a Sunday or go to church on a Tuesday? That your life was sort of free and you could mix and mingle with whoever you wanted to and had no care in the world? Do you remember when you didn't have to be obligated to pay tithes or to give offerings, but you could use that for some bills or buy something for the kids or something you needed? Do you ever want to go back and dress like you wanted to go and get your hair fixed and your nails done and you were just considered normal like everyone else? He could have done away with this world. You and I would have never existed, but God through his mercy and his grace made a sacrifice just for you and I. He was beaten, spat upon. He wore a crown of thorns. He carried a cross while losing blood. He was nailed on a cross. This is what he went through for you. He did not consider it an inconvenience, but rather a sacrifice. While for you, you are troubled that you have to spend three hours in a church listening to somebody preaching. <laughs> I would say it's not an inconvenience. I would say it is your reasonable service. The thought of the day, we can never pay back God for what he did for us. So all that we do for him is just considered as being reasonable. God is. A lot of people today don't understand God and who he is. They have a wrong idea or a concept of God. They say, is there really a God? I can't see him. How do I know if he's real? Let me tell you a little something about God. The Bible tells us that God is a spirit and therefore he is invisible to the eye. You can't see him, but he's still there. You can't see him, but you can surely feel him. God is omnipotent. That means that God is all powerful. He holds the power of the world in his hand. It was God that parted the Red Sea, protected the three Hebrew boys in the fire, shut the mouths of the lions for Daniel, caused the sun to stand still, lying to see, deaf to hear, lame to walk, dumb to talk, heals cancer, heals AIDS. He is the Almighty God. He created this world and all things were made by Him. And without Him, there was not anything made that was made. From nothing he spoke into existence, the universe. He created light and darkness, day and night, the stars and flung them into place, the sun and the moon, the trees, grass, and all the wildlife. He is the Almighty God. The thought of the day, if God can keep a fish fresh in salt water, he can keep you. God bless you today, in Jesus' name. Please remember to like and subscribe to my page on YouTube, your support is much appreciated. Hey, we make a miracle walker, promise keeper, light in the darkness.